Hello, and welcome to FWC's recorded workshop presentation on Skyway Fishing Pier State Park. This presentation provides an overview of the issues surrounding seabird entanglement and fishing gear at Skyway Pier, including a summary of the ongoing actions by FWC and partners to address this issue. This presentation will also summarize potential rule options to restrict the use of certain fishing gear that has been associated with severe entanglement leading to injury or death of brown pelicans. So why are we here? FWC staff are gathering feedback on potential fishing regulation options intended to reduce severe seabird entanglement at Skyway Fishing Pier State Park. Skyway Pier is one of the most visited fishing piers in the state, attracting both residents and visitors from around the world. The site and surrounding area is also a popular place for seabirds, including pelicans, to forage, perch, and rest. Entanglement of seabirds in fishing line has been occurring at Skyway Pier for many years, and seabird angler interactions at this site occur much more frequently than at other sites. Since 2016, FWC and partners have engaged in outreach and education efforts to reduce the likelihood of entanglement and improve rescue success. Despite these efforts, severe entanglements still occur in large numbers at Skyway Pier. For this reason, we are looking for input on fishing rule options to address this problem. The Skyway Fishing Pier State Park was established in 1992 after the current Sunshine Skyway Bridge was constructed. Sections of the original bridge across Tampa Bay were converted into two separate fishing piers, a half mile pier located in Pinellas County on the northern side of Tampa Bay and a one and a half mile pier in Manatee County on the south side. There are also multiple decommissioned spans of the original bridge adjacent to the park fishing piers which are not accessible to people. A bait and supply shop is also available on both the North and South piers. Due to Skyway piers accessibility, long lengths, and unique fishing opportunities created by the adjacent spans of decommissioned bridge, it is a very popular site for anglers. As one of the most visited fishing piers in the state, Skyway Pier receives approximately 200,000 visitors each year. Visitors are required to pay admission fees for vehicles and adults, and Skyway Pier is open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, and is staffed by one state park ranger and multiple concessionaire employees. Skyway Pier has a bulk fishing license that covers all anglers. Therefore, anglers are not required to have an individual saltwater recreational fishing license in order to fish making this site further attractive for new anglers, out-of-state visitors, and other fishers that may not understand the likelihood of interactions with seabirds and other wildlife while fishing. As Skyway Pier is both a former transportation structure and a state park, the responsibilities for the fishing pier are shared among the Florida Department of Environmental Protection and the Florida Department of Transportation. Management and operation of the state park has been contracted to the park's concessionaire, Pier Associates Incorporated, since 1995. The FWC is responsible for regulating all activities that relate to fish and wildlife, including setting rules for fishing. All entities involved with management at this site consistently coordinate on pier activities. Brown pelicans are the primary species at the Skyway Pier regularly involved in negative angler seabird interactions. In fact, about three of every four birds rescued from entanglement at Skyway are pelicans. A recognizable Florida species, these large gliding seabirds breed in colonies consisting of hundreds of birds nesting on coastal mangrove islands. In addition to the year round resident breeding populations, Florida and Tampa Bay in particular, is home to migratory pelicans that overwinter in the state when northern climates are cooler. Brown pelicans have a unique foraging behavior in that they plunge dive headfirst from heights as great as 50 feet to capture and scoop up surface fish. Pelicans are also known to regularly exploit feeding activities of other species, including humans. They do this by following fishing boats, loitering at marinas, and scavenging from bait buckets. 
When not nesting or foraging, pelicans are commonly seen resting on sandbars, jetties, poles, and piers. The brown pelican is included in Florida's Imperiled Species Management Plan and is protected under FWC rules prohibiting the take and harm or, of wildlife. Additionally, the brown pelican is protected by the Federal Migratory Bird Treaty Act, under which it is unlawful to harm migratory birds. Specific conservation objectives and actions for the species are identified in the 2013 FWC Species Action Plan for the Brown Pelican. These actions are designed to address the primary threats to the species and include focusing on targeted outreach to minimize monofilament and hook entanglement, implementing appropriate management to ensure quality habitats for breeding and foraging, and providing protection from disturbance near breeding locations. There are multiple large breeding colonies near Skyway Pier, and both juvenile and adult pelicans are frequently seen foraging and resting at Skyway Pier. On the map on the slide, you can see the north and south Skyway Piers highlighted in red, with known brown pelican breeding sites, which are the yellow stars, surrounding in all directions. There are large and locally important nesting colonies in the Terra Sea Aquatic Preserves, and Egmont Key, which are to the south and southwest of the Skyway Pier, respectively. Egmont Key National Wildlife Refuge, in fact, was specifically designated for the protection of nesting brown pelicans. There are also monitored colonies at Passa Grill in the northwest, Little Bayou to the north, Coffee Pot Bayou, and Alafia Banks Critical Wildlife Area, which are northeast off the map. Brown pelicans from colder latitudes come to Tampa Bay in the winter due to the abundance of habitat and food resources. Outside of breeding season, roosting may occur wherever mangrove habitat exists. At no other fishing pier in the state do we find pelican supporting habitat completely encompassing the area as we do at Skyway Pier. As mentioned earlier, Skyway Pier is popular for both anglers and foraging seabirds. During the fall and winter months, human use of Skyway Pier increases due to favorable weather and fishing conditions. The arrival of migratory adult pelicans and recently fledged juveniles from nearby breeding colonies dramatically increase the number of pelicans at the site during the fall and winter as they take advantage of perching and ample foraging opportunities. The fishing opportunities for both people and pelicans during these colder months, along with the unique features of Skyway Pier, create a high likelihood for seabird angler interactions at this site. Skyway Pier has multiple physical elements that contribute to higher frequencies of angler seabird interactions and entanglement compared to other fishing piers. The pier's height requires suspended fishing lines to be long, posing greater risk to pelicans foraging in the area. Abundant perching areas make Skyway especially attractive to seabirds for resting and foraging. And lastly, the shade generated by the adjacent spans of bridge attracts fish, providing unique fishing opportunities for both people and birds. According to a recent peer-reviewed study from Eckert, Eckert College, these site-specific attributes of Skyway Pier are the most significant explanatory variable for pelican entanglement. The study also indicated the number of entanglements at Skyway Piers are five to ten times greater than at other sites where entanglements are known to occur, and reports that over 7% of all brown pelicans seen near piers in Tampa Bay during the study period were entangled in fishing gear to some degree. The hotspot interactions may include birds becoming entangled in the lines of angler attended poles and birds becoming hooked by fishing gear. Pelicans, especially juveniles not well adapted to foraging and flying, may have increased difficulty detecting the longer fishing lines cast at this uniquely high pier. Impacts to pelicans range from minor wounds to severe or chronic injuries or even death of the bird. In circumstances where a bird is entangled and the line breaks or is cut, the entangled bird has a greater likelihood of mortality as its ability to feed and fly may be impaired. 
birds that can be retrieved or rescued from entanglement or hooking may also require veterinary care and rehabilitation. So when we say entanglement, we're describing any situation in which a bird is caught in fishing gear. This includes a bird encounter with fishing line where an angler can release it safely without handling, birds caught in line so thoroughly that hands-on rescue is required, and severe hooking situations that cause harmful injuries that require veterinary care. Entanglements also occur when birds caught in gear break free or the line is cut, which is more likely to result in the bird's death. Severe and chronic entanglements, those that require experienced rescue attention or veterinary care, are associated with rigs and gear with multiple hooks. Sabiki rigs and chicken rigs are often used to catch bait, which are also being targeted by pelicans. Birds can readily become entangled due to difficulty seeing the fishing line, and multiple hook rigs like sabiki rigs can increase entanglement severity and make rescues more complicated. Pelican hooking by multiple hooks, such as treble hooks, often leads to immobilization if the bird's extremities are pinned to one another, making it impossible for the bird to fly or forage. Lightweight lines associated with bait rigs are prone to breaking when a large bird becomes entangled, thereby introducing marine debris and increasing the risk for secondary entanglement and harm. As illustrated in the table on the slide, in the past two years, more than 3,300 entangled seabirds have been rescued at Skyway Pier, as reported by partners. Rescues are defined here as any entanglement that requires intervention by an angler or experienced wildlife handler. More than 1,000 of these rescued birds were severely injured and required transportation off-site to receive veterinary treatment. An additional 500 or more pelicans were confirmed or presumed dead due to entanglement. Impacts to the persistence and longevity of the local brown pelican population have not been studied, but harm from entanglements to breeding birds in particular could lead to an overall decline. Strategies to address these population level threats are outlined in the species action plan that was mentioned earlier and include ongoing actions such as targeted outreach to anglers and regulatory protection from disturbance. As previously highlighted, seabird angler interactions continue to be prevalent at Skyway Pier. Multiple efforts by both FWC and partners are ongoing to prevent these negative interactions and minimize impacts to pelicans and other seabirds. Since 2021, many of these efforts have been coordinated through the Hooked Pelican Working Group, which is a group of partners and stakeholders collaborating to identify solutions that address pelican entanglement at the Skyway Pier and other sites throughout the state. Current efforts in place include education and targeted outreach on prevention, best fishing practices, and seabird release guidance. There has also been increased presence of FWC law enforcement, park and concessionaire staff, contracted bird rescuers, and volunteers at Skyway Pier. Signs promoting best practices for seabird rescue have been improved and additional signs have been installed. Web pages, social media, and other publications have been updated with additional information and resources to prevent interactions and minimize impact. Among these resources are video tutorials on safe release and guidance on the best type of gear to use to reduce interactions and injuries. FWC has also developed several long-standing programs to lessen entanglement of Florida seabirds and are working with partners to ensure visitors at Skyway Pier are aware of the resources available. These programs include the Monofilament Recovery and Recycling Program, the Don't Cut the Line and Real Remove Release campaigns, and an interactive seabird rehabilitator app to identify nearby rehabilitation facilities if a bird becomes entangled. Seabird rescues and transport for veterinary care continue to be a key part of response, along with increasing documentation of the frequency, species, and outcome of seabird angler interactions. 
To illustrate the extent and duration of these efforts, this slide provides a timeline of some key milestones related to seabird entanglement and actions implemented by FWC and other partners at Skyway Pier. While fishing line entanglement has been occurring at Skyway Pier for many years, volunteers have been engaged in organized pelican rescue efforts since at least 2013. In 2014, Audubon began documenting entanglements and injuries at Tampa Bay Piers. Additionally, a partner-led group called the Bird Protection Committee began holding regular meetings to address the entanglement issue at Skyway. In 2015, FWC launched the Don't Cut the Line outreach campaign to educate anglers about risks associated with cutting their line when a bird becomes hooked. In 2018, the rescue group Friends of the Pelicans was officially incorporated after some years of volunteer effort. The organization rescues birds entangled at Skyway Pier and transports severely injured birds to veterinary and rehabilitation centers. A sharp increase in visitation during 2020 led to an increase in documented pelican entanglements at Skyway Pier. In response, the FWC formed the Hook Pelican Working Group to coordinate region-wide efforts addressing entanglement. The first meeting of the Hooked Pelican Working Group occurred in 2021, and additional actions taken by FWC and partners include updating signage at Skyway Pier, Department of Environmental Protection enacting a three-rod limit per angler, increased oversight and staffing at Skyway by DEP and the concessionaire, and the bait shops phasing out sale of sabiki rigs. In 2022, FWC staff continue to work with partners and stakeholders to provide technical assistance and implement actions to reduce entanglements at Skyway Pier. We have updated our pier fishing best practices on our website, and several partners have produced informative videos about entanglement and bird rescue. To reduce the likelihood and severity of fishing gear entanglement, Staff have developed potential rule options for fishing regulations at Skyway Fishing Pier State Park. These potential rule options are intended to minimize harm to brown pelicans, reduce the need for birds to be transported to rehabilitation facilities for veterinary care, and alleviate conflict between anglers and pelicans at Skyway Pier. Our potential rule options include, for all those fishing at Skyway Fishing Pier State Park, prohibiting the use or possession of hook and line gear rigged for use with more than one hook attached, such as sabiki rigs, chicken rigs, and topwater plugs, as well as prohibit the use or possession of any multiple hook rigged for use, such as treble hooks. The potential rule option would also include limiting all anglers fishing within the park to possession of no more than three sets of hook and line gear, the limitation of three sets of fishing gear already exists within DEP rule, and staff would like to propose that this be included in FWC rule. In addition to these potential modifications to regulations, staff would continue extensive outreach and coordination efforts with partners to reduce pelican and seabird entanglements at Skyway Pier. There are several points to consider when deciding whether to implement fishing regulations at Skyway Pier. Gear restrictions would reduce severe entanglements that are commonly seen with use of gear rigs with multiple hooks, like sabiki or chicken rigs, and multiple hook lures. Sabiki rigs are often constructed with a light test mainline and branch lines that will break if a pelican becomes hooked. Pelican hooking by a multiple hook, such as a treble hook, often leads to a mobilization if the bird's extremities are pinned to one another, making it impossible for the bird to fly or forage. Additionally, unattended fishing gear can increase the likelihood of severe entanglement and injury if the bird cannot be rescued quickly. These severe entanglements involving multiple hooks are generally too challenging for anglers to handle alone and require the need for bird rescuer response and attention which can be difficult to quickly receive due to the length of both piers. 
Limiting anglers to no more than three sets of hook and line gear would reduce the amount of live fishing line that pelicans must avoid, thereby reducing the likelihood of entanglement. Moving forward, continued outreach and education efforts remain paramount in addressing the issue. Staff will continue work to extend productive coordination between invested partners and stakeholders, which is vital to future success. We'd really appreciate your input on the potential rule options presented here, which are intended to reduce severe entanglement of pelicans and seabirds at Skyway Pier. Again, these potential rule options include, for all those fishing at Skyway Fishing Pier State Park, prohibiting the use or possession of hook and line gear rigged for use with more than one hook attached, such as sabiki rigs, chicken rigs, and topwater plug lures, as well as prohibit the use or possession of any multiple hook rigged for use, such as treble hooks. This potential rule option would also include limiting all anglers fishing within the park to possession of no more than three sets of hook and line gear. Additionally, we also welcome any other suggestions that could help address this issue. We will continue to gather public input on this topic, so if you or someone you know would like to provide additional comments, there are multiple opportunities to weigh in. Staff has been and will continue to meet with interested stakeholders to get feedback on potential rule options for fishing regulations at Skyway Pier. If you are interested in coordinating a small group meeting, please email marine at myfwc.com. You can also email your comments to that same email address. Another option to provide comments is through our web form at myfwc.com forward slash saltwater comments. Additionally, we will be holding more public workshops on this topic in early 2023, and more information on these workshops will be available soon on the FWC website. After gathering feedback, staff plans to present proposed rule recommendations and all public input to the commissioners at their February 2023 commission meeting. That concludes this presentation and thank you for watching.